the uh, quick reflect. We are back in session. Parties and council are present. All members of our jury and our alternates are present. And Mr. McGee, you may continue your examination. Thank you. Did you, Detective, did you get an opportunity to uh, review the report regarding the travel time? Yes, sir. Now, you testified, uh, well, let's start with the Ranch Cucamonga, then back to the Avocado Vista time. You said that, that was at 8.30 to 9.30 in the morning, approximately? Yes, sir, I started at 0, 31 hours. And what was the distance? Uh, approximately 68.3 miles. And how fast were you traveling at that point? 70 to 75 miles per hour. Now, the direction going from Rancho to Fallbrook at that time, uh, during the week, most of the traffic's northbound, correct? I don't know. I don't travel that very often. When you're driving down, were you in much traffic going down? They said that I, it was moderate traffic. Do you notice the traffic going back up? I don't remember. The Corona Crush? Didn't see it? I don't remember. Why didn't you check the time? Well, correct that. Were you checking the drive time from Rancho to the Fallbrook House to see how long it would take maybe Mr. Merrick to drive down? Objection, that would call for speculation. Oh, yes. And the date, it was important to see how long it would drive. Would it be uh, February 4th of 2010? <coughs> the date when there was last contact between Mr. Merritt and Mr. McStay that evening, correct? Correct. So why didn't you drive from 5.30 from Rancho to see how long it took you at that time under the same conditions? I don't know. And you did this in October. What was the weather like when you did this experiment? I recall that it was clear. public transportation and taxis down the border, correct? Correct. Did you check with the taxi companies to see if uh, anyone drove from that location up to Fallbrook or uh, Range Creek Home? Yes. It's actually vague as the time. Rural the answer yesterday. And I assume we mean if you're looking to see if anybody did on February 8th of 2010, correct? Correct. But did you find that anybody had any noted service driving from the border to either one of those locations? I did not. Nobody had any records, correct? Correct. Nothing further. Anything else? Any questions? Just a couple questions. To be clear, they don't keep records of taxes, do they? Correct. Objection foundation. <laughs> and you were asked about noting the gambling times, correct? Correct. And gambling became significant to you after interviewing Sarah Taylor Jarvis, correct? Correct. Because what did she tell you about her dad's gambling habits? Objection outside the scope and relevance and hearsay. To speak. 
And I'd ask leave of the court to call Detective Sears and reopen Cross to explain the gambling topic. The objections still sustained as to the content of the conversation, the fact that there was a conversation that caused him to believe that that had some significance is all that's relevant. The GPS uh, pin or ping that, that you did, you indicated that the way that works is the carrier sends out a signal roughly every 15 to 18 minutes. Is that right? That's correct. And then if the phone is on and in range of a tower, it, the phone will basically register that ping off of whatever tower it, it, it's receiving from correct sir okay is the carrier sending out that ping in response to your warrant or is that something that they just do all the time uh, if you know i don't know okay uh and do you know if uh that technology uh or that procedure existed in 2010. Uh, I don't understand what technology you mean. The GPS tracking, if it existed back in 2010? Right. Yes, it did. And do you know if there were, uh, well, you don't know if the carriers do that on just as a, on an ongoing basis, or if they only do it in response to a warrant, correct? Correct, I don't know. Okay. okay. Anything else? No. All right, you're excused at this time, subject to recall uh, in the future. And you call your next witness? Yeah, the defense will call. Alex Quick. employed with the Department of Justice? 20 years. And what was your assignment in February of 2010? I was assigned to a major crimes task force within the Department of Justice, and we were attached to the San Diego County Sheriff's uh, homicide detail. And on February 19, 2010, uh, did you accompany a detective, Troy Dugall, to a search of a residence in the Fallbrook, uh, city, city of Fallbrook? Yes, sir. And that was the Avocado uh, Vista residence? That's correct. Now, did you write any reports in this case? No, sir. Did, when I contacted you, do you remember exactly what search I was referring to? Yes. 
did you find it necessary for me to send photographs of the home just to help refresh your memory? Yes. And I sent you some photographs, correct? That's correct. And if I can have um, my computer show you what's previously marked exhibit 20. Do you recognize that as being the house you went on the search? Yes, sir. And when you went on the search, uh, what rooms were you assigned by Detective DeGaulle? The downstairs uh, office and living room. And when you say living room, are you talking about the great room that includes the kitchen? Or are you talking about the front area that had no furniture other than like a table and some floor? I think it was actually more of the living room space, not the kitchen. Okay. But if I recall, it was all <coughs> one giant room. So you searched the office that was behind the kitchen? Yes, sir. And I'll show you what's marked exhibit 59. It's a photograph of what the office looked like when you entered? Yes. And exhibit 61, that was a desk you saw inside there? Yes, sir. <laughs> And when you went to search the desk, did you notice anything about it? Yes. What did you notice? There was a locked drawer. And which drawer was locked? It would be on the, um, if you were sitting at the desk, the right side, lower, larger drawer. So like the bottom drawer um, of like if there's a stack of drawers, is it the bottom larger one? Yes, sir. And to, were you able to get inside that drawer? Eventually, yes, not right away. And how were you able to get inside? Uh, I had a lock picking set that I had to use to open the drawer, unlock the drawer. So, are you trained, or have you seen training, and, and are you experienced in using lock picks to sometimes open a locked uh, door or cabinet or something? Yes, sir. You found that necessary to get into that drawer? Yes, sir. Do you remember everything that was inside that drawer? Yes. Well, what did you find inside? It was, it just contained empty file folders. Are you sure there was nothing else in there? Yes. Let me show you exhibit 66, and well, I'll go 67, which was known as the checks that were found in the office. Can you tell me where those are found? No. So as I said, you didn't write a report, correct? That's correct. So if you found items inside the office, you would have relayed that information to another officer? Yes. And who was your contact with that information? Detective Duval. And did you have a partner with you that helped you search the areas you were assigned? Yes, sir. Do you know who that was? Yes. Who was that? Special Agent Ramos. And it was Special Agent Ramos, do you know uh, their employee? Yes, yeah, she's with my same department. <coughs> so you worked with her before? Yes, sir. Do you remember finding these box of checks anywhere? No. Going back to exhibit 66, the box with the checks is placed on this a red chair, correct? That's in the office? Yes. I'll go back to exhibit 59. That's the same red chair. Oh. Yes. You sure you didn't find those checks in the locked drawer? Objection. Intentionally misstating previous testimony of Dennis Williams. And is argumentative. The drawer was empty that I opened up. So the drawer was locked with nothing inside? Just the empty file folders.
Nothing valuable inside. No, sir. Now, before you testified today, did you speak to anybody about the search? Yes, sir. And who did you speak to? I, as soon as I received the subpoena, I reached out to Detective DeGaulle. And you spoke to Mr. Or Detective DeGaulle about the search? Yes, sir. And you also spoke to me? Yes, sir. <coughs> present during that conversation with Mr. McGee, to your knowledge? No. Were you asked specifically about whether or not the checks were in the drawer, to your memory? No. Did you tell him at that time that you re your, what your recollection was? Yes. And was your recollection the same as you testified here today, that it was file folders? Yes, sir. Did Sergeant DeGaulle provide you any documentation to assist in refreshing your recollection? Yes. What was that? Notes and uh, one of the pages of the report that had the date and the assignment he had given to you. And in any way did that refresh your recollection that those checks were located in the drawer? No. Had a box full of checks been located in the drawer, would you have noted it? Yes. And if we previously heard testimony from Dennis Williams, the crime scene specialist, that those came from that closet in that master in that office, would that be the reason why you don't know where they came from? Your Honor, objection, argument. Sustained. What also calls for speculation. Did Mr. McGee make you aware that Dennis Williams testified that those came from the closet? Your Honor, that's the improper objection. Our objection. And it was only that one drawer that was locked, correct? Not the whole tent, the whole desk. Yes, sir. Okay, right, thank you. Nothing further. Anything else? Yeah. What was in the other drawer? I can't recall. How many other drawers were there? I can't recall. Were any of the others locked? No, sir. So just the one was locked? Yes. you searched the desk, did you see or did you note that the other drawers were unlocked until you had to unlock the bottom drawer? I can't recall what order it was. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes yes. lock, we'll lock all of them. Yes. And do you know how that desk worked? I don't believe, I think it was, it's, as far as I remember, it was just that one bottom drawer that I just explained was the only one that was locked. And that's the best you can remember? That's the best I can remember. Because you didn't take any notes, correct? Correct. And you didn't write a report? Yes, correct. I did not. to uh, Mr. Quick being excused. You may. Thank you for your attendance and you are excused. Thank you. And then you call your next witness. Right, can we approach? Um, yeah. I'm sorry? Can we approach? Sure. 